So we were talking about some of the can wires here, and here's a little closer up view of everything here. See how the twist of pair is going in here and daisy chains through all the vice. So you got wires coming in, you can go back out. It's starting right here at the Robo Reel. Anyone know what this is on the power distribution board? Anyone see this little jump around here? Anyone know what it's used for? Besides Granite City gearheads? It's a terminating resistor. Without that, uh, some type of resistor in there, you will not be able to communicate through your CAN bus system, loop it back. Now, you can go to these different manufacturers and purchase the little CAN bus splitters and they'll have them integrated in there. But if you don't, and you can't communicate to your CAN bus and you can't figure out the wiring and this jumper set to off, or if it doesn't go here, you won't be able to communicate with anything on the software side. So I recommend using it. It's easy. It's already available. You don't have to do anything but make sure the jumper's on, okay? Quick and easy to do. Now, one of the questions that comes up, if I'm not using any CAN bus on here, for instance, I don't have no pneumatics on my, my robot, and I'm not using any CAN motion controller, speed controllers on my robot, do I have to use the CAN bus anywhere? Anyone know the answer to that? They haven't changed the rule yet on this. <laughs> Yes, you must have at least one connection. That would be from here to power distribution board. So as a minimum, everyone needs to have one connection on there. On here, we can see the firmware version and everything on there. And you can monitor each channel within there on your power distribution board, OK? Any question on the CAN bus there? So what I encourage teams is if I come as a control system advisor with my orange hat to your pick because you're having issues on the field, I want to talk to the electrical team or the lead electrical member. And I always ask them, do you have a piece of paper, a notebook piece of paper? Do you know which fuse location goes to what motor controller? Because it makes my job a lot easier and it makes your job a lot easier that you can quickly identify that. If you're having a problem on one channel, we can go to that fuse and make sure it's seated on the robot reel, on the, on the power distribution. Or we can go check the connections to the wires to, from the speed controller down to the motor. We can check out that gearbox. We can check out that coupling connection. So always just put a piece of paper and write them all down. This fuse is running this motor, front left, front right, whatever you need to do. One of the things is probably the last thing most teams will think about when building their robot. This is called the robot signal light, status light. And one of the times we get a lot of questions sometimes because the blinkly light's not going on, it's because the jumper's been removed, okay? So this always has to be visible. When they're up on the field, you have to have that so everyone can see that light because the status of what the robot's doing on here. If it doesn't flash, this is why. Someone's removed the jumper. So when you're opening up your KOPs and getting your lights and all that, make sure that you keep the jumper with it. Batteries. Batteries and terminal connections on this circuit breaker. One of the biggest, largest, one of the heaviest calls we get on during competitions is this type of connection. I've been to several these regionals now, and I don't know how many times I've walked up to a team and this terminal right here is loose. All the batteries are loose. It jostles around and all of a sudden their robot's dead. 
And if you want more help, you can go over here too and show you how to crimp these things and make good connections off of these. These stuff like this is all pairing apart, not good. So make sure they're tight. Make sure you're using the star washer down here in the right location and getting it tight. And do a tug test. I don't let my guys turn on a board unless they've done tug test. Went through and pulled on wires, try to get them all right. Because all that's going to do is create nuisances in the times when you power up and you got intermittent issues. So, what our team has done in the past several years is we've made removable boards. And what's not nice is coming up to one of your robots and we got this going on, right? Wires going everywhere. The electrical guy doesn't know where anything's going. I don't know what I did with it. You know, this is our 20, this is our 2015 board. So this was a simple layout the D-Link on here. We got all our Talon SRs on here. We put everything close to power distribution. We routed all our cables all together, made it nice and neat, made it latch there for our battery connection, and everything's all tied together. And there's every wire on there's got a wire label on it. Now, I don't, I'm not saying go out and invest in a big label, labeler, but use some method. It doesn't matter to me if you got pink, red, green, blue, yellow markers, as long as that wire is the same marking all the way through your system for that motor. And I prefer to have it on a piece of paper, but that's your choice. So make it clean, think about your routing. I know sometimes we ran it with our own team the mechanical builds all these nice manipulators, actuators, motors here and that. Or we can put the watch forward, guys, and no one knows. And so we got to try and fit it in a location. We also make it a removable board because that way our programmers can be over here working on the programming and have the board all ready to go. And we don't care what the mechanical guys are doing. We don't care they have to go drill in their hole or file off something on there because we don't want any chips to get into our robo reel. We've fought issues like that for at competitions where chips get down on these pins and it don't take much, we're shorting out. A little bit on the electrical tools, make sure you get good tools and the right strippers, connectors, crimpers for the right job, okay? Multiple different ones out there. They got the nice color dots for your connector sizes on here. They got numbers right here that tells you what. Anyone know what these numbers are right here? What this means? What does it mean? That's the gauge of the wire that you can be stripping. Make sure you use the right number for the right number of wire gauge you're using, okay? Because if you don't, you can make it too deep or you might not get enough off there where you're actually getting in there and you're trying to take the insulation off and you're starting to peel off some of the copper. Make an A. Anything that's a connection or makes it, you make it weak, make it a failure. And no one wants failures of the robot on the field. So these guys got all my props over here. So one of the things is, you know, look at how far you're shipping the wire back. You want to make sure you have enough, but not, not, not too much where you got whiskers hanging out. We recommend stripping them off and putting ferrules on there. This is the next slide. And then what we do is we also make sure we keep them long enough. This is key. So when we start pre-wiring our motor controllers and stuff and our motors, I always have the guys put another couple inches, three to six inches on there, because it never is going to be that routing that we think it is. Again, I love our mechanical engineers. I work with them every day at work. I'm an electrical engineer controls at work. Nothing frustrating that we have to move something, and now we're two inches shorter, three inches shorter than our destination. Now we've got to rebuild the whole wire. So it's always nice to make them, then cut them down the length when you guys finalize your design on your robots. So if you've never seen a cutout view of what these little blocks are here, they're spring-loaded. And you should never see this on your robots. That's why I'm hoping you're here, right? Get some tips to make your robots better and wiring-wise. Or maybe this is your first year wiring a robot, right? Anyone see anything like this? Just pull the wires out and tell them to redo it. <laughs> right? We don't want to see that. 
because that's a point of failure. It's not if it fails, it's going to say when that's going to fail. When is that not going to work for me when I'm running the competition? So these are spring loaded, you can pop them right in here. Make sure we get all the way down here, but then we also want, want to see a bunch of copper sticking outside of the terminal block, right? So now I'm in there, right? Tight in there. My recommendation is use the square fer uh, ferrules. Get a square crimping tool, run the wires all the way past like that, outside of it. I like to make them a little bit further sometimes just to make sure I'm all the way through that ferrule. And I squeeze down with that one of these and then it makes a nice square and then I usually cut it off. So depend on your length, so be careful. Pay attention to how long and how big your ferrules are. So DigiKey is here. They have a ton of different ferrules. One thing you can go and pick up at, at DigiKey is ferrules. But pay attention to what ferrule lengths you're getting, which ones you're buying. And I'm gonna, uh, they were on our list that went out earlier today, but we should, I should post a better list on there, make sure you got the right ones for each device. But notice how this is in this cutout view, right? Make sure the insulation gets all the way in here. But so the insulation ain't back here, you got wires in here. So you want in here, make a good crimp on here, and then if you have to cut it off, and all your wires should be right there. Again, right now they're practicing that, if anyone's interested in that, seeing that. And we recommend the square ones versus the round ones because they seem to fit them terminals better when you snap them in there. Yep. Nope. Yes, sir. Okay, that's one I recommend. So, did anyone know that there's a proper way to make these connections? So, on the sparks, you saw that. You take thermal out, right? And you have to put an eyelid on her or a fork one. Did anyone know that there's a proper way and improper way to crimp these connectors? Anyone paid attention to that? How many of you just grab it, strip the wire, and throw it in here, and I, whatever way I got the crimping tool, I crimp? Anyone did that? So make sure you pay attention to that. See the slit right here, that? You push down that, no good. Right here, you want to do it, make a good crimp on that. And again, these are color coded on these devices for a reason on these tools. Use them, that's what they're there for. Yes. Anderson pole connectors. Great to use. I love using them if they're done properly. Again, I've seen these connectors melt, literally melt down together in a regional competition because it was sitting there arcing the whole match and the time they got done, they had nothing left of the connectors. We just had to cut them off and re-terminate them. There's a great video online. You guys are in the nice video age. Look it up if you want to do it. There's an easy way to do it. Get them in there and snap them in there. So on here too, see how that goes in there? And there's a proper way to snip them in here to the thing, because they interlock together. And then you can slide these together. So we use this for a couple reasons. We put them from our motor controllers all the way down to our motors. And if a motor goes bad, a motor control goes out, we can easily do that and we can have pre-wires made to quickly swap out a component between matches. If a motor burns up or something happens, on snap it, we got the motor and the connectors ready to go. We just slap it right back in, tie it back up to our robot, get the wires, wire tied back in there, away we go. We don't have to sit there and try and make these when we're under fire to get into the next match. So again, buy the right crimper for tool for that. Soldering, I hope no one in here, maybe you guys never even seen a solder iron like this. Should never use that one. <laughs> I used to use this when I was a kid. As long as you're holding the thing, you're good. But use soldering. There's a place to use soldering on there. I'll do that on the wires when I do the POE stuff. Sometimes on them connectors, we would cut the insulation off. So we'd crimp it and solder it and then shrink two back over the connector on our sparks or the town SR stuff like that, we would use that method doing that. 
So this, this little, little slide on, you know, this, if you haven't soldered before, there's a way to tint there, so get the soldering iron ready. You should have a sponge clean it all off and stuff. It's not classic soldering, but just something to consider when you're doing it. There's proper uh, soldering techniques that should be followed when doing that. <coughs> Doing some heat shrink, I like doing that. Anything you're doing wires together, that should be shrinked on there. Again, we don't want to see exposed copper on any of our wires or any connections. So over the connectors and that, put heat shrink over it, that down. You can actually do multiple colors. When you do your battery terminals, put it on that as well. Uh, pretty self explanatory this guy, heat shrink gun here. Turns on, it's very hot to put your hands on. It's a little more juice than a hair dryer. And then it takes this and just rolls right onto the cable and connection you're doing. Again, we talked about some color labeling stuff on here, right? It doesn't matter to me, but I highly recommend it that you have some type of labeling scheme on your robot. This makes life easier. So when you do your pre-match checklist, right, and go through and check everything, check the connections on everything, then you know if something comes unplugged in your robot, how many can you just walk up and say, yep, that's where it goes, without really tracing the wires back and everything? If we didn't have wire numbers in our panels at work, it would take me forever to find something on there. So try and come up with some type of scheme that helps everybody out, especially yourselves and your teams. There's also label flags. You can use the wraparound. they got different things like these. You can tie them on there and whatnot on their cables like that. There's something to consider. I, I don't even be putting masking tape on our numbers. Yeah. So we went through a lot of things. Um, ignore the four here, but in past it's been section four. It might be different for 2019. But at the end of the day, we have to follow what's in the game manual for the rules, right? So on your robot design, wire gauges, make sure you pay attention to the wire gauges. I'm an electrical engineer, so when I was doing robot inspector for a couple of years, I could tell right away they had the wrong wire gauge on there. It makes teams upset when I have to tell them you have to rewire it. It's supposed to be a 12 gauge or a 10 gauge wire on there and they don't have that for the right motor size. That's what the rules mean, that's what's being enforced for the integrity of the game. So pay attention to the section in the manual on these. You know, when to use 18 gauge wire, when you need to use the 12 gauge, where you need to use what wire gauge. And it's helpful to have the spools with you in the pits if you get questioned on it because it should be stamped on the wire. On the insulation, sometimes it's a little harder to see on them. But pay attention to that, please. It'll save you a lot of headaches when you get to the originals, when you go through inspection, okay? How to wire everything with your power distribution and everything else, okay? Is there any questions about that? Be spelled out in there, and if you don't understand that, please ask questions. Uh, back to your heat shrink tubing. Yep. And also in regards to the rules, are there other substances or devices, techniques that you can use to uh, cover your wiring? Maybe you've already reconnected something and put a uh, crimp something on, and you're like, oh, crud, I forgot to put the heat shrink tubing on. Is there anything you can brush on, wrap on? Well, you can use electrical tape. You know, it's easier to put the shrink tube on from the beginning. You know, it, it's, if you're done, right? Shrink tube's good and bad, because sometimes, okay, if I have to get back at it, I gotta try and get the shrink tube off or just cut that section of wire out and re-terminate it. Yeah, <coughs> so maybe a part's too small for electrical tape. I guess I'm thinking like Plasti-Dip or anything like that. Do you know of any other type of? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Any other questions on that? 
I, mean, I think that's basically it. Uh, again, uh, this is our, the team I'm currently on. I was with 3840 for five years. Now I'm lead mentor over here with 7068 now. Um, good luck to everyone in 2019. If you have questions in that, you know, you contact some people and get a hold of so you're sure that you're right before you get to the regionals. <laughs>